In Elementor's latest 3.24 update, they introduced variable fonts. Now, when you go back here to your custom fonts and add a new one, you have new options. You have the option to add a static font and add a variable font. In this video, I'm gonna show you where and how to find variable fonts. I'm gonna show you what a variable font is and how to use it properly inside of Elementor. Also, most importantly, I'm gonna show you how to use these in a way that are going to help your website's performance and not harm it. And this is really important because variable fonts can either have a positive or negative impact on your overall performance of your website. And we definitely don't want to unnecessarily slow down our website. So if you are considering using variable fonts, you're gonna to wanna to watch this one all the way through. The first place most of us will start is here inside of Google Fonts. We could go here to Filters, and then there's an option for Variable right here. This way, it'll show us which fonts have variables. And as we are looking at the variable fonts, we're gonna see here the number of access that they have. Now, this is getting a bit complicated. It'll make sense more later on in the video, but basically what the access is, it is an access inside of the font file that allows us to use CSS to change that font. We could change the width, we could change the weight, the height, even change the slant, and well, some of them have more access than the other. We're gonna select one that has multiple because I wanna make sure we could really utilize the variable features. So let's select on Nunito Sans. If we go here to Type Tester, then we're gonna see right here weight and width, and it has this sliding scale. So right here, this is 200 uh, weight. But instead of using different font files for the weight, we could go ahead and just use this selector right here, this scale, which is really just using CSS to make the weight bigger. Same thing with the width. Now, some fonts, they have condensed versions, they have expanded versions and extended versions. And then we could even control the height as well. You can see the, the height of the font is going up and down. Now, Elementor does not have the option to control height. It only has the option to control width and wait at the time of making this video. But we are gonna be able to make our fonts anywhere from condensed to expanded like that, and we're gonna be able to change our font weights as well. Another resource is gonna be custom fonts. So for those of you who are building advanced design projects, you might be already used to using custom fonts. Sometimes when we do buy a custom font, it'll come with variables. And here is a good example of a font with a whole lot of room for variables. Because if we look at this font, look at how compressed it is. It's got the compressed, the italic, it's got the condensed, it's got the expanded, the extended. So there are a whole lot of options. And if we were to want to use all of these styles on a website, we would need to add an individual font file for each one of these. But with the variable, we don't have to do that. We could control everything with one font file. I feel this is gonna make understanding variables a lot more clear. So let's take a look at this one. It's a compressed font. If I go to this dropdown right here, we can see the options. We can see the width, weight, and slant. Again, these are gonna be controls that we're gonna be able to use inside of Elementor. For the width, right now it's at its lowest width at 25, which is completely condensed. And then we could expand it out all the way to its expanded or extended version. Same thing with the weight here. So you're gonna see with custom fonts, you're probably gonna have more options as well as like slant. But again, this isn't inside of Elementor, it does not have slant, just the width and weight. Now let's add these to Elementor. Over here in our Google Fonts, I'm going to select on get the font. We're gonna download it and then open up the file. Inside the file, you're gonna see the static and this is what we have been installing into our sites for custom fonts. Every single font style, uh, font weight has its own font file, but we don't need to add any of those. In fact, we have two variable files. The first one is italic. Don't use that. We don't need to use it. That's for a very rare situation because some fonts have a completely different style. For italic, for now, just disregard it. We're going to use just the regular file. But take note at this. The file is 
569 KB. And more on that coming soon when we look at the performance. Back here, we're gonna to go to custom fonts, add new, go ahead and give it a name, select on variable font, and then you're gonna see we only have an option to add a TTF file. Now inside Google Fonts, all we have are TTF files, but some of our custom fonts, like the one that I showed you in the Font Foundry, they might have a Wolf or Wolf 2, which has a smaller file size, it's more optimized. At this time though, Elementor doesn't support it, only the TTF. Again, more about the performance coming up. Okay, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is let's upload our file. Let me upload it right here. It's in my file already that I downloaded straight from Google Fonts. Now, next up, we need to set up our width and our height. So let's turn both of these on. Now, in order to find the values that goes inside of here, go back to the font that you downloaded. For this one, it was Nunito Sans. I'm gonna go back here over to Type Tester, and then we're gonna see right here, we got the weight and the width. Let's do the weight first. And if we take it all the way down, it starts off at 200. And then if we take it all the way up, it goes to 1000. So let's put those metrics in there. So over here in weight, minimum is gonna be 200. Maximum is gonna be 1000. And this is essentially 200 font weight, which is extra light. And then you're gonna have 1000 font weight, which is extra bold. Let's do the same for width. Over here, I'm gonna take the width all the way down. It starts off at 75. We're gonna take it all the way up and it's at 125. Let's go ahead and add those in. We got 75 and 125. No pixel, no RAM, nothing at all, just like that. And if you are using a custom font, they should have something as well, just like what we have here. We have the same thing. We have the metric for width, for the lower end and then for the maximum and then the same thing for the weight. That is how you find those metrics. And now let's see how this works inside of Elementor. I already have a little something set up here. I'm gonna go over to this title font, to my typography, and let's choose the font family. You'll see we have our custom fonts. This is my static font I was using, but now we have a new option for variable fonts. I'm gonna choose a new Nito. And you can see now we have the new options that open up here, weight and width. Let's go ahead and slide it and you can see now how this works just like it did when we were looking in Google Fonts or the custom font in the Foundry. Same thing for width. So now we have more control over the style of our fonts and what this could do is it could reduce the amount of font files that we need to use on our site. With that, we need to talk about performance because we gotta learn how to use these correctly and even if you should be using these. I'm gonna answer that for you right now. We're gonna make this really simple. Let's start here to get a good understanding of how this affects performance. Right here, I have one of my original static custom fonts right here for different font weights. And you can see I got five different files right here. Now with this, I'm able to use Wolf and Wolf 2, which are smaller file sizes than TTF. They're more optimized, but still there's five of them. So these five, they do add up to a certain amount. And let's take a look at what we are working with with Nunito. All right, so Nunito Sans, this is the variable font. The variable font is 569 KB, which is quite a bit. It takes time for that to load when somebody comes to the website. Now, if we were to look at the static fonts, there is a whole lot of them for Nunito Sans. In fact, there is a total of let me see here, 160. Okay, that, that's just insane right there. Nobody would ever use that, but there's a chance that you might want to use three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There might be more options that you wanna use. Normally, I try to use somewhere between three to four font files on a site. I try to keep that minimized, but then sometimes we have fonts like this where we have other options for expanded and extended. And you might want to use this option together with maybe something condensed and of course normal as well. So this is where the font files could really start to add up. And let's just take a look at the first five of these. So five of these files together is gonna be the same size as the variable font. It's actually a little bit more at 576. 
Now, this is a TTF. The TTF font file is large and it's meant to support all devices, including really, really old devices and really old outdated browsers. Nowadays, what we should be using is Wolf and Wolf 2. And if we look at Wolf and Wolf 2, I set up those same five right here. In fact, I did one extra. Let me move that to the trash. I want to see those five. So you can see the five with Wolf is going to be 305 KB, which is much better. And then with Wolf 2, which is even more optimized, but only for more modern computers and browsers, this is only 200 KB. Now, between using Wolf and TTF, I know that's a whole other discussion, but just to sum it up, I avoid TTF. I don't use it. I choose not to. I choose to stick with Wolf and Wolf 2, and that is because my views on this is that if somebody's using a really old computer, really old, outdated browsers, they're not seeing the best versions of the web anyways. So they probably aren't even going to notice the difference of a custom font and a regular system font. Me personally, I don't want to sacrifice performance and speed to support that user where it's really not going to impact or affect or even be noticed. You know, I want my websites to be fast. Now there is the file size that's part of the performance, but there is another advantage to using the variable to improve the performance. And that is a number of requests over here. I already ran a test before the video and it has 42 requests. Each one of these requests, they do impact the speed. The more requests, the more loading has to be done on the website and the slower it takes to load. This affects the speed, but it also affects your score as well. So we always want to keep these requests lower. Now, if you're using four, five, six more font files, every single one of those is going to be a request. So if you have, for an example, five font files inside of your custom font, that is going to be five requests. But if you have only the one variable font file, well, you're only going to have one request. Now, this is where we need to decide, is this going to help performance or is it going to hurt it? And the way you're going to find that out first is you're going to go back over to your font. You're going to see how many different font files are you going to need? And you're going to see how big, you know, how much do these total? Now, if they total a whole lot, let's say the five font files total like five, six, seven, eight hundred, and your variable font file is only about three, four, five hundred, it makes sense then to go with the variable. But some variable font files are massive. For example, let's take a look at enter right here. So the enter, uh, the variable font file is 875 KB almost a full megabyte. And if your variable font file is a large file size, way larger than the com combination of just the font files that you need, then you know that it could actually harm it. Now, if they are similar, we have five font files. Let's say the total of these is 400 and I have a variable font file that's between four and 500. I would use a variable font file because the reduction in those requests that we looked at in the speed test is actually going to outweigh that extra font file size that needs to load. So that is how we determine if this makes sense or if it doesn't. So what do you think about variable fonts? Can you see yourself using them? If you got questions, drop them inside of the comments. Just a heads up, a lot of new features have come out recently for Elementor and I've been away traveling. So I'm back in the studio and I'm just playing catch up right now. I got a lot more videos of the latest features. They're going to be dropping one right after another. So definitely subscribe, do all that good YouTube stuff. So that way you can get notified as they drop. As always, I appreciate you watching and I will see you inside of the next video. Thank you.